Can you celebrate these guys, please? <laughs> guys, how many of you have been blessed by the series so far? How many of you have upped your great game as regards your faith? How many of you are dreaming with God? How many of you are believing like God? Now we're going to start birth with God, but it's gonna, I'm going to break it into two parts. Because to be honest, Bishop, I feel like God has done what he wants to do. Well, we just said, and right here, birth with God, but I have a message, dear Moses. Dear Moses. The one that your life has always been like, the devil has just been after you. Situations have just been after you. <laughs> and then you started with so strongly. You started so passionately. On fire, you're ready. And looks like your better days are behind you. Because all of a sudden, it looks like everything God has said, I'm not leaving it. I don't see it. But I remember they said there's something special about me. How come it's all doom? I mean, this nation, I don't even understand what I'm doing. Some of you, it's a case of when I was on campus, they knew me when I passed. Everywhere is on fire. And now it's like I'm even struggling to see the traces of that fire. Dear Moses, you can be a male or a female. You are so passionate. You want to do something for God. You want to birth things for God. But you are wondering how can this be? Or you've been on a journey. You believed you heard God. You obeyed that instruction. You believe you heard from God. And then it turned out like you're on your own. And ever since then, you shut up everything. You shut up everything that says God said. Because the last time you obeyed a God said, he ended in premium tears. It feels like you make progress. And only for you to see, you're actually regressing. You're wondering, when will this hide and seek stop? When will this tension I'm here to announce to you, God still want to birth with you. He did not unchoose you. Did somebody hear that? He did not unchoose you. In fact, it's actually announced to you, God's dreams are always valid. And if you have put that dream in your heart, it will come to pass in the name of Jesus. So to birth with God, you need to learn some things. Number one, you have to be willing. You have to be obedient. And you have to be available. <laughs> Hallelujah. Praise God. The next thing, we must ensure that what you carry is God's. Meaning, that dream you carry, be sure it is God's. To birth with God, you must dream with God. Believe like God. In order to birth with him. And when pastor said, I was taking that again. In order to birth with God. It's like taking a pregnancy to a man and say, you are responsible. Say how? If he's not responsible. He said, how am I responsible? What does he do then? Let's do a DNA test. So this morning, God want to carry our DNA test. With the things we carry. Some of us, it's not like the, dreams is, the dream itself is wrong. Sometimes it's an interpretation. Sometimes you are not in sync with his timing. Or sometimes that dream has become your God. And you must know that God will never trade himself for anything, not even the work he can do through you. Because for God, it's not either or. For God, you must learn to do from being. So if what you're doing is taking you away from God, darling, that dream has been perverted. Why? Because God will never, ever trade you for what you can do for him. God will never trade you for what you can do for him. How do we know? Matthew 7. He said, in the last days, because he said, Lord, Lord, knowing the right password doesn't mean I know you. He said, but God, we cast out demon in your name. We cast out da, 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 da. You know the light part I love, mercy translation. He said, even our God-sponsored project got everyone talking. Like, our God-sponsored project. Me, and God said, get behind. I didn't know you. You only used me to gain famous. Almost, meaning, because the project was sponsored by God. Meaning, in way you're giving testimony, it was a miraculous provision. 
Meaning outcome does not determine that you are still in sync with God. So if you are judging and rating your life by what you're doing and the results you see, you can still miss God. The Bible says even the elect will be deceived. So what then, how then do I ensure that what I'm carrying is God? You must be intimate with God. Into me, see. You must remain in intimacy. It's like a married couple and they want to give birth and they're not having sex. It's only married that that thing happened for and there's no plan that you want to do another one. So you have to be intimate with your spouse to carry a child. The same thing with God. But guess what? Does you have to be intimate with your husband to carry a child? No. You have to be intimate with a man to carry a child. But it's advisable that it's your husband. The same thing with the things of the spirit. To bring forth results, you need to be intimate with God. However, God might not be the only source. So you can be intimate with the lies of those world and you carry a seed. You can be intimate with deception and you carry a seed. Some even go far to be intimate with the dark world. Occult. That's why when Chris Bible says, believers, don't envy the people of the world because you don't know who impregnated them. Just like you don't see anybody and desire what they have. You don't know the back end story. You can be inspired. You can learn. Except you can tell who impregnated them. Just look away. So the same thing. You see, it's not my child. You see people, when they learn to do DNA tests, that's what they realize. And because you're not carrying that child and still enjoy some sort of covering and privileges, meaning you're still blessing lives, people are still giving you testimonials, that what you're doing, you'll be a blessing to me. You see, you can never build your life on testimonials because testimonials can lead you to hell. If it falls testimony, what do I mean? People are praising you, praising you, but you're off, you off from God. The only person that needs to constantly validate you is God. So testimonials are good. Let me tell you. Let me put it out there. But if the testimonial is the reason why you do what you do, what if they are testifying to what is false? What if they are testifying to that illegitimate seed that you carry? What if they are testifying to the fact that another demon impregnated you is not God? But you are able to feed all the all the hungry people in your area and they say, wow, you are doing great. Because his deeds doesn't mean it's of God. Can we take that again? All good deeds doesn't mean it's a God deed. You see guys that are fraudulent, they will take money, they can build a hospital. It's a good deed. But doesn't mean it's God deed. God does not end, endorse such. You can still pay false food, pay tithe, build a church. Blah, 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 blah. You will see that name. Wow. As the Bible says, no, no man by the flesh, but by the spirit. Are we going somewhere? So you have to be intimate with God, to birth with God. So the first thing we're going to do today so, is to feel that which I carry. Who impregnated me? Where did I pick it from? Some of you, how do we know? This mindset I have, who bewitched me? According to Galatians chapter 3, oh, ye believe, uh, Galatians, um, yeah, Galatians, who has bewitched you to believe even religious things, statements? Remember when we're talking about statements? Some of you need to sit down with God. This mindset, I'm just like this. This is how I act, this anger, these things, these things I say, is how who impregnated you? To birth with God, you must be in partnership with God to bring forth from God. When pastor said, from partnership, from fellowship to partnership. God can still do it, amen? amen. I can't hear you, amen? amen? God can still do it, but he chose to do it with you. What a privilege. I don't want to go into that, but let me quickly touch it a bit. I spoke about it yesterday briefly. When I was reading that Elijah Amadi again, I was humble. I've always seen it. I understand the principle of the 7,000. But look at this. I say, guys, generation, my gen listen. Performance, the way you score your, score, your scorecard is better from the way God scores. 
to know how God scores, get into the word. God scores with your heart. Your motives. God scores with what cannot be seen. It says what cannot be seen, that's a litmus test for what is seen with God. If what cannot be seen is not pure, what you have produced is not pure. So when the Bible says to, all, to him that is pure, all things are pure. So Elijah, at that point, felt like the training guy. Elijah said it will not rain for three and a half years, guys, and it happened. He saw Brook, he saw the widow, he saw uh, uh, mighty things. Elijah, God said, come back. It's going to rain three and a half years. He came back. Then Jezebel, somebody say Jezebel. Jezebel gave him the run of his life. Now, if Elijah was just afraid, it was fine. Elijah was not just afraid. Elijah had gotten entitled. Anybody listening to me this morning? Talking about birthing with God. I want you to understand that every time you must do this check, where am I with God? My heart, what is the posture of my heart? And you will know by thing, God will use things to expose your heart. So Jezebel shouted, I'm, doing, I'm paraphrasing 2 Kings 19, Elijah ran. He ran, not just because he was afraid. He was afraid, God, I'm afraid. Jezebel wants to kill me. He didn't stop there. He said, God, I am done. Take my life. Am I the only one? Ha! Ah, all these mighty things I'm doing for you. Kill a great, kill a Jew. Jezebel chase you. God, I am done. So, what happened is sometimes to birth with God, watch this, when you're birthing with God, you are not the only one God is using. What will that do to you? It will make you humble. So, God now saw Elijah. Why did he stand from? So, what did God do for Elijah? God said, come, eat. The journey is far. The journey is far. What's the journey? The journey to go and anoint your replacement is far. After that scripture, did you hear about Elijah? You know, you guys, you didn't get this. Elijah, I want to die. Leave me God. They tapped him, but when he eats, drink, the journey is far. He slept again. They woke him up. Eat again. The journey is far. That food carried him for 40 days. To do what? To go and hear God. To, what's the essence of that hearing God? Go and anoint Azael. Go and anoint Jehu. And the Bible puts it this way. And Elisha, your replacement. Did you catch that? Elijah that just did all these mighty things. So God did not replace him because he was tired. God replaced him. It's his own mouth. He voiced that words in his heart. Entitlement. I've never, as in when the Lord explained why. And you know how we know? God said, God was bragging. You can't hold God ransom. Dear Moses, I want to birth for God. You can't hold God ransom. God said to him, Ogbeni, he said, they've killed all the prophets. They, they've killed all the ones you can see. God, all the pastors are bad. That's the ones you can see. All the Christians are not, that's the ones you can see. God is never without. There is 7,000 that have not bowed to bow. Those 7,000, we don't know whether they had the opportunity of going out of the city during the famine. We don't know the history. Maybe they also stayed in famine. You, Elijah, you had upgraded process. You were outside of famine. You saw all the spectacular. We don't know if the 7,000 were at the back end or somewhere. No brook, no anything. God could take care of them the way he would, whatever way, because they were alive. He took care of them the way he would. But they didn't write about it, so he's not in the list of the miraculous. When we are talking about the, the, the mighty prophets, we don't mention the 7,000. But these are the 7,000 that God was bragging with. Visibility is not the same as significance. <laughs> Is this a call to think big? Because you are not significant also doesn't mean you are significant. That's the balance. So don't think, oh, significance is not the same. So I cannot be, don't let anybody see. It doesn't mean that God, you are doing what God sent you. The same way because you are in a process that has become a lifestyle doesn't mean it's God. The same way every backwardness does not mean it's God. Amen? Because what we like is extreme. So that means 
never be seen. Everybody that is seen is everybody that is seen is in error. It's not true. It's the same God that elevated Elijah. The same God that kept the seven thousand. He shows you the mind of God. See this God, our Maridi. You cannot explain. You cannot fully decode. We will continue to decode till we get to heaven. Why is this important, dear Moses, the one that wants to birth for God? If you don't understand this, you will do great things. Your heart will have shifted. You will not know. You will do great things. You know how your shoulder will, will be up like this. I'm the one that is going to change the world. God has been crushing. It's God that will change the world. I'm just in partnership with him. So yes, I will change the world with the power in me. There's a power inside of me that is able to change the world. I can change the world with the fire in me. There's a fire inside of me that is able to change the world. Do you understand this? So dear Moses, pay attention. So when the Lord asked me to go and do something in state, before I carry, he said, hey, 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 hey. I said, sir, because I was already going, I know there's so much problem in this place. I need to, f- there's so much problem. Did you notice how Jesus came? Jesus did not come with the attitude of, even though he was talking to the Pharisees and everything, he was still able to sit down with the Nicodemus. Why? He knew that he needs to empower, he needs to, because at the end of the day, he has to look at you and say, greater works, you will do. So I was, God said, madam, as you go to this city, you are going to add because I have 7,000 in this city that are doing something that you don't know. Yes, I might use you to tear down something to build. When I do that with Jesus, it's a privilege because guess what? Every time God chooses you, believe you me, there's 7,000 somewhere. Whether the 7,000 have been converted or not, when Peter then were doing, when Peter then were following Jesus, guys, when Peter, they were following Jesus. John, the, Peter, John, we are we bed 12. How do we know? When somebody was calling them, or just say, Jesus, they are calling your name. They are not our disciple. Then fire come. They say, whose, whose kingdom do you think I've come for? Because God could see in the future there's a poor. A poor that has not yet given his life to Christ, but it's going to be one of his 7,000. So let me shock you again. That 7,000 doesn't mean that maybe they are born again at that time. They followed Jesus everywhere. They didn't write up to what Paul wrote. You see, so you're being born again in 1802. It's not a prerequisite for how deep God will use you. It's just mercy and grace. So every time I have the opportunity to do this, I woke up this morning... I had a very long day. I was tired. I said, God, what a great opportunity to serve. Because guess what? I'm not the most prayed up person. I'm not, there are people that are doing greater works than me somewhere. It's just an opportunity. You see, when you understand this, the way you carry power will be different. The way you talk will be different. You see, as an, you can't be entitled to doing God's work. God, you know, it's just a lot of work. I mean, the, the, ah. Paul said in the book of Galatians, the things and second, first Corinthians 2, some of these things I'm teaching you, I didn't learn it from man's wisdom. God taught me myself. God did crash one-on-one course for Paul. Three years, he was alone with God. He said, I know of a man, he could not even talk about it. He said, I know of a man that he went into one place that the things he saw, he cannot say. He was the one who was talking about her. So some of you that are thinking that, ah, Look at Pia now. She has been, a mother gave her up for God. I understand no much. I said, God can do much more with you than me. I said, I just gave my life to Christ. Look at Pia. She's just spitting fire. You think in this kingdom, it's by when you enter. It's not by when you enter. It's how ready is, how ready is your heart. Yes, well, I might have my journeys with God. There are some memories I have. That when you enter, God will not be building with you. But my man forgets. How do I know? A man was employing people to come and walk. He saw some by 9 o'clock, some by 3 o'clock. When it was time to pay them, he gave the last one, maybe $1,000. Like, those ones first, like, ha-ha. One more hour, we'll go bad. We have been walking since. My man gave them one thousand. Ah, 
See, the problem was not that they got 1,000. The problem was, how can you give me the same thing as this? So dear Moses, I want to birth with God. When we talk about humility, it's not that they don't carry your Bible alone. It's your heart. It's your heart. It's how you do service, Baba. How am I doing what I'm doing? With the consciousness. That is why you are careful to just say, don't say the Lord, because you know it's an office of trust. That is why when God brings people your way, not just as a pastor, even as an employer, you are careful with them. It's an office of trust. When you drive and you see that person who scratch your car, sometimes you can be angry. What's wrong with you? The next you remember, but for God's mercy. That man that you missed this splash water on, because, and he was the one you were doing peeping, peeping, he did not answer. And you just said, Well, and what I just pass on the guy, splash on the guy. Even when you are angry, you are able to do this, but for the grace of God. When you go and buy food and you come out, you eat what you want, not what you see. You remember it's the grace of God. You wear what you feel like, not what you must wear. It's the grace of God. So when you get to a place where you wear what you can and someone that is wearing what they have, you don't look down on them because you have this mentality. God has 7,000. You have this mentality that this might be the next poor. You have this mentality in one year, two years, this might be my mentor. Is this is the reason why we have selective honor. We don't understand this principle of God. That to birth with God is a God is God's selection. Is God's grace according to capacity. Is a privilege, Baba, that you're on that keyboard. There's somebody somewhere that probably could pay better can do better. But God in his infinite says, I'm mad deep that I gave this to. So when I do my work, sometimes I'm tired. God says, Ah, you won't know. You are tired. The Lord, they know, they know, they, they just call you. They, say, mm, they just call you like that. They should have, no, I'm tired. They just call you like that. Ah. Hey, if not for the mercy and grace of God, would they even find you to call you? So while I go through, okay, God, I'm not saying that, you know, I'm not saying that you don't have um, principles. I'm not saying you should just access is not the same thing as love. Do you understand? That not everybody you give access to, you can love people and it's not that they have access to just barge into you. I'm not saying balance, I'm just saying the one God has sent you to, they are beginning to irritate you. Why? You have forgotten. If there, are, if there is no need, there's no you. Did you get that? Yes. If there isn't a people that need to hear the voice of the Lord, would, be, would there be a need, be need to have a pastor? So why? They are the reason I'm in office. So if God is paying me my KPI, how many lives have you equipped this month? Not how many lives have you, your church, that are not equipped? How many people have you served? Not on stage where you can say, oh, glory to God, preach it. No, 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 no. After stage that they've annoyed you, pastorship, I celebrate all past of everything I've approved, but you can still love them and nurture them. How many guys? This was not in my message, but I just wanted to tell you that, dear those that will birth with God, can we deal with entitlement? Can we deal with our hearts? Can we deal with how we take God? So that's why, if you don't, if those are work, you know, I don't joke with my work with God because I have a response. I know that God, I'm going to give an account. Guess what, guys? Something happened to me recently. How many of us are praying? And as you are praying, you are also using your phone. I'm conscious. I am right there. The Lord said to me, what level of disrespect? I said, la, ba, ba, ba. Let me quickly, ba, ba, ba. No, I'm not talking about those quickly, just somebody, maybe an important message you have to boss or something. But even early morning prayers. Or just time with God, you quickly update something. I saw me and Boma, I said, Boma, Boma. When I said, Boma, what are you doing here? God said to me, how did you see Boma? And I said, but God, I quickly came to rest. It made, she too quickly came to. I just quickly, uh, I had another prayer call. I was getting, God said, exactly, she has the explanation. 
So what did I say? I said, let's go back to the prayer. <laughs> hey, we are not pastor that is coming to, we'll tell you as he's doing us. And then Zoe said to me, can you come before the president and you're fiddling with your phones? Those of you that want to breathe with God, you must understand intimacy and protocol. You can't be doing any hour without God. Ah. So we'll just read one script and we'll end. The process of birthing. I'll take, part, I'll take the second process. I wrote two. Number one, dear Moses, be in sync with God's timing, his shadow, and his how. Can you open Genesis 2 for me, for verse 11? You see, Genesis 2, in the beginning, Moses was born. They knew, the mother said there was something special about Moses. The mother kept Moses. And they now, see how God works. After three months, some, some of you, God is hiding you. You are fighting hiding. Thank God you are hiding. Maybe if you come out before time, you'll be a prey. Share, share this service thing. That's what, that's what motivates me for service. My husband can bear witness. I know, I, it's like I'm giving account. So, it's not one of those pastors who have just, but pastor, you, are, you have to create. I already have some conversation. I said, babes, next month is going to be this what I'm feeling. I need to maximize. I want to die empty. I want to die ensuring that I give birth to everything God wanted to use my womb for. And sometimes the way you do it is to focus on the job like it is what. So, I don't understand when we come to church. We can come late to church, but we can't go late to office. God can understand, but your boss can understand. So Exodus 2, they kept him. They looked for someone that would be the nurse. They found his mom and everything. And the next thing that happened is, Amadi, God says it's coming. He says it's coming. As you're playing, when I came, I actually sensed it. And I felt the Lord was saying to you, the word I felt was using for you was Samuel. You're just at the altar, watching, watching, serving. And then that day, unprecedented, God spoke to Samuel himself. Of course, you've been hearing God, but God is saying, it's coming. The way it's going to happen, you won't see it coming, but it's coming. So the way it's going to happen is just make sure you're always at your post of duty. Serving with joy and all your heart. And it says that the sacrifice you made recently, it wasn't convenient, but you decided to do it regardless unto the Lord. He says he honors it. So Exodus chapter 2, let's read from verse 11. So after they have put him in packaging, what happened? <laughs> Guys, how many of you read that story? I think that, see, can, can, any, can Hollywood or Hollywood beat God? God is a perfect script writer. By the way, this thing is real life, it's not story. How come is when they brought the baby out? That is, that's when the daughter of Pharaoh is saying, whoa, whoa. Daughter of Pharaoh knows her father is killing all the boys of Egypt. He's now that baby. So when you're seeing that movie, we're laughing at them. It's an expression of me. <laughs> they now saw the baby open the basket. This baby can be a danger to your own inheritance. It's a disrespect to your father. The baby girl said, yeah. And the baby was like, oh, he's so cute. The one that did not pay me, that paid me is that when they now brought the boy to Pharaoh, was Pharaoh sleeping? Yeah. Pharaoh too. Pharaoh too, like, they didn't know it's this there now. And it's just perfect. Thought I look like you. I said, when God is writing the story of your life, allow God. He's playing a plot that nobody can, nobody. See, you are bothering about the enemy when God has got him under control. The enemy does not threaten God. The enemy is just part of the script, script actor in your script. The enemy is just a paka pass in your script. It's just a it's just to make this film sweet. Because Pharaoh was killing. Why would why we Pharaoh? Look at you and say, stay in my hands. But guess the plan God was playing? I know the one I've sent. He needs to understand the language of the palace to come back to the palace. 
So that's when God said, you are salt and light. Let me tell you what it means. God will plant you in a system to spy the system, know the system, so you use your God kingdom you, you, so that it can use you to birth his agenda. Are you hearing me? But you want to be salt alone. That's another message for another day. Salt. When he says you are the salt of the earth, you know what he's saying? I will plant you in the system. They won't see you, but they will feel you. They won't say, if they can't, how many salt do you see? When you taste soup, they say, this soup, is, this salt is sweet. No, you don't say, they say, this soup is sweet. What? Salt totally ignored, but yet very powerful. When salt is not enough, say, ah, there's no salt. We know what to call, but when it's sweet, we don't give accolades to salt. We don't say the salt is sweet, say the soup is sweet. And salt is just right there. Enough to be the one to make change, but quiet. Salt is just right there. Penetrating into system. And guess what? You don't need too much salt. And that is why, that is why God will say, I'm looking for one man. One man that can change the system. One man that say, God, use me. One man that say, I'm palatable with you. God, I'm flexible with you. Do me any hour. One man. Because salt, you don't put the same um, volume of salt into the soup. Instead, you need a portion, just a little portion. Do you know the process of salt? Do you know how salt became salt? If it's from the sea, they will have to spread it for a long time for it to dry. The process of salt, but has salt ever complained? No. So when God said, be the salt of the earth, what does it say? Allow me to plant you in places for as long as I want. You might not get a thank you. You might not, but you are changing things from the inside. When God said, be the salt of the earth, it means that, let me put you in a system. Go and learn how they do Hollywood. Go and be the one carrying camera, but they know you are an actor. You have the potential to be the lead actor, but they don't see you. It's fine. It's salt season. Go and learn how they do it there so that I can bring you in the day to light. That's why salt came before light. Salt of the earth, light of the world. Because by the time you get to the light season, you are seen. And that season attracts a lot. If you are seen, you are okay for all the things that come with it, persecution, everything. We don't persecute salt. We just ignore salt. We don't persecute. We don't persecute. We don't persecute salt. Because we just ignore it. So maybe in a season. And that season God is forming your heart. They didn't tell you thank you. They left the church. The church did not greet me. Ah, salt. Salt does not complain. They just take it. Mix it. You go through process, they are mixing you everywhere. Pressure everywhere. And you just enter it. The salt is the one that makes the difference. Yet, there's no recognition. If you cannot be salt, you are not ready to be light. Because if you are used to being ignored, when they begin to attack you, he can't do anything. I have been to it before. And if I venture, even when you now come to light, there are stages of light. There's flood light in the stadium. There's bulb light. There's touch light. Whatever light you start with, if you have learned to be invisible yet powerful, no matter my size of light, is okay. If you make me to light's place, it brings me from salt to light. It's a matter of time. So the one that wants to God must understand this principle. Salt of the earth. When the Lord showed me this scripture years ago, it changed my life. Salt of the earth. Light of the world. When I preach it, I even come with the stage with salt. The moment you put salt, you can't see it again. But you can taste it. As I said, that if the salt should lose its taste, not its sight, not its visibility, taste. What does that mean? If you lose your, your, your anointing to be able to change a system without being said, what does it look like in a place of work? You are salt, meaning you do your job. Promotion or no promotion, you do your job. Salt, you show up when everybody's complaining. Salt, it's not convenient. I do it. Why? I am on a mandate to be a salt. And salt allows them. Hmm. Somebody shout, I'm the salt of the earth. So Babado was in his 
And I'll show you Moses some season now quickly. Exodus chapter 2, 11. One day after Moses had grown up, he went out to where his own people were and watched them at their hard labor. He saw an Egyptian beating a, a, a Hebrew. One of his own people, he knew. So he knew. All bringing, they've taught him. <laughs> so it's not enough to know. You need wisdom. You need understanding. Look at this way and that. He killed the Egyptian and eat him in the sand. The next day he went out and saw two Hebrews fighting. He asked, what's wrong with you? Why are you eating your fellow Hebrew? The man said, who made you? Who made you ruler and judge of ours? Are you thinking of killing us, killing the Egyptian? Then Moses knew. Moses was afraid and thought, what I did must have been known. When Pharaoh heard this, he tried to kill Moses. But Moses fled from Pharaoh and lived in Midian, where he sat down for a while. Can I pick a few things for you? One. Passion is never enough. So you, that dream is doing you is never enough. Because you can, be, you can act in error. Moses had a body. Moses was a deliverer. They probably told him that Moses, you're a deliverer. So he's, he had a passion. I'm a deliverer. Anybody here, you have a passion for something. And God is saying, wait. He's like, God is not fair. Allow me. I will change Nigeria. Send me to Asura. God said, this rock will kill you. If I get to Asorok, I will set it because <laughs> the rock in that place is not Olumo rock. It's a deeper rock. Let me do the work. Now look at what Moses did. God will never want you to do his work and you're looking left, right. Before Moses could not even carry out, that means he knows that what he's about to do is bad. But he could excuse it to say, boy, it's my dream. The same way a lot of us are living out our dreams, engaging with certain principles that is not God. But he say, mm, that's how it is done. So what did Moses do? He looked like this. He looked like, and God knows what I want to do with Egypt. You have to be confident to do it. You can't be looking like this. Pharaoh, does says the Lord. So, he killed the person. I have a question for you. Dear Moses, how many Egyptians will you have to kill to set Israel free? Your own head, just if I kill one, I recruit. Even the people who are fighting for say, Baba, come out. You are not one of us. Because they are looking at you, you that live in the palace. You can't help us. So what did God do? He ran. He now went into his salt season. He had to go and learn. He was a shepherd. If you go to Exodus 3, <laughs> dear Moses, when God was speaking to Moses, let me say, Moses said, who will be, who will I say send to me? Moses before that was, ginger, ginger, let's go. Let's, let's kill them. Let's take, we can do it. We can. A man that's been conquered by God, his language is different from the one that's just been driven by the good idea. So what happened was, Moses had a dream. He started with God, but after a while, it became his emotion. It became just anger. Anger cannot do it. It's the same thing with Nigeria. Anger enough. We've seen it in history. Remember what happened last year? He cannot do it enough. We need the wisdom of the hold. Why? At that point, Jethro has been like a mentor to Moses. That is why later when they left Israel, Egypt, Jethro can come and meet Moses. Moses, you will die. If you continue to administer like this, apply delegation. Bring 70 people. Da, 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 da. Did you see that? Moses, before that, wanted to do God's work. Maybe and not listen. Now is a Moses that will listen to do God's work. As I wrap up this morning, what did we learn from Moses? Anybody blessed this morning? Dear Moses, it will never be by your power or your might. Dear Moses, yes, darling. Dear Moses, it is God's dream and it has to be his way. Dear Moses, you need to go through the process. Are you with me? Number one, dear Moses, it will never be by your power or your might. Dear Moses, determination will never be enough. Dear Moses, if it's God's dream, you has to be, it has to be God's way. 
your vision, your dreams, your plan. Sit down with God. How you are doing business? How do you know that your social cost, um, your CSR, what's that thing? Your corporate social responsibility has to be to the orphanage. How do you know that's what God wants? Because that's how they do it. If you just do it because that's how they do it, it's no longer God's dream. It's God's dream because you ask God. Maybe God wants you to do, you to go and build school instead somewhere. Or he wants to use your, your income to do something else. But because you don't understand that if it's God's dream, it has to be God's will. You just make decisions like Moses, looking left, right. He looks to be smart here. Let me walk my way around it. Let me do this. Dear Moses, you need to go through the process. How do I know? Go and read Exodus 3. The distance between Exodus 2 and Exodus 3 is years. You see the way Moses is talking. Now, guys, do you know in Exodus 2, we did not know that Moses stammered. In Exodus 3, now we know he stammered. Where did he pick it up from? This is my summation. It's not a scripture. I'm just trying to imply. In that day, it felt like uh -uh, I'm related to the prince. I'm the prince. I could use my power there, my connection. Stammering does not matter. But it got to a point where he became so vulnerable. Now he has been so humbled that he can see his own shortcoming. And now his language has changed. Almost like God, they will not listen to me. God said, Go. When God was saying that it doesn't matter, I will speak through you. You know what I'm saying? If you could speak before, you can still speak now. But now there's no support for Moses. No palatial support. Now it's solely God. Moses, though you are in the process, and it doesn't seem like anything good could come out of where you are. Or maybe you think you're forgotten. God never forgets. And he still wants to dream with you. God's dream are valid. Can you rise on your feet as we pray? So what am I saying to you this morning? Go back to God. That dream you are carrying. Remember we said, who gave you what? Bele, hello. Who gave you what? Uh -uh. Who impregnated you? This vision dream you are carrying. I am a, I'm a, I'm a finance guru. Mm. Fantastic. But just be sure it's God. Now, if you're not sure it's God, are you in God's timing? Are you doing it the way God wants? Can God tabernacle? And if he's not, can you surrender yourself? Say, Father, do to me. As you did to your children, as you did to Moses. Humble me, take me through the process so I can birth. Not a stillborn child. Not a bastard for your true dream. Open your mouth and begin to pray. Believers, open your mouth for those watching online. You can say to God and say, Father, Lord, birth through me. Birth through me. Do what only you, God, can do. Birth through me. Birth through me. Some of you are in your salt season. Do you want to repent? I say, Father, I forgive me for always complaining. Is God teaching you your salt season? Is your character? Is God working on your character? Is God teaching you joy? Where have you become entitled? Ask the Lord for mercy. Nobody owes you anything. Not even God. But out of mercy, He has given us what we have. And it's by mercy we access. Open your mouth and pray this morning. Some of you, have you left service? Are you serving God anyhow? Take it to manage. Do you want to make a new commitment to God today? God, I will serve you better. I will serve my community better. I will serve my family better. I will show up better. I will be a better support system. I'll, you can, I can be dependable. God, you can depend on me. Come on, open your mouth and talk to God today. Are you the Bezali that God has sent to another Moses? Are you the Bezali God has anointed to make the work of other people? Say, God, I will do it better. Whether I'm seen or not, whether I'm recognized or not, some of you need to now talk to God. It's not even to God. It's even to, even to, it's not even to man, to God. Have you, how have you dealt with God in your work with God? Say, God, I will serve you better. I'll spend better time with you. I will worship better. In Jesus' name I pray. If you're watching or you're here and you want to give your life to Christ, anybody, can you raise your hand? Anybody want to give your life to Christ? 
I want to rededicate your life. Please come forward. Raise your hand. All right. Hallelujah. Please come put your hands together as she comes forward. Anybody else in the house? Watching, so say after me, beloved. Say, dear Father, today I renounce my old ways. Say, forgive me of my sins or any way I've offended you. I accept you as my Lord and personal Savior. I boldly declare today, I am born again. I am set free. I believe that you died. And you rose on the third day. And you are living today. So that I may live. I receive the empowerment of the Holy Spirit. To help me on this journey. My life will never be the same. Never ever. Never ever. In Jesus name. Can we celebrate God? God bless you. We'll see you after seven. Briefly. Let's go back to your seat. For those on life, you make that prayer. Jump your hands together.